What's going on guys, No Guides here, welcome back to another formation tutorial. Now in today's video we're going to go over the 4 triple 2 probably one of the most effective attacking solutions to outnumber your opponent when you're attacking. The key with this formation is you attack with 4 strikers in a front line. That creates a 1v1 versus each of your opponent's back 4. But the key thing with this formation is you actually attack in a 6 because a left back and a right back they join the attack, they create the overlaps and the left attack in mid and right attack in mid or the cams in a 4 triple 2 they end up becoming almost like inverted wingers. So you have two strikers, two inverted wingers, and a left back and a right back that when they go forward, they pin your opponent's back line backwards. So what happens is your opponent's left back and right back, they get brought away and get split apart from your opponent's traditional center backs. And that's what creates more openings and makes it easy for you to attack. This is a formation for if you're losing, you need to get back into a game, or if you just wanna go straight in blitzing into attacking style formation. Now when you're defending, you defend in a 4-4-2 flat, like a traditional 4-4-2 or 4 triple 2 so you've got your two CDMs there for stability, cutting the passing lanes. But the key thing with this formation is if you're getting counter attacks, we have one of the CDMs on drop between defenders. So that means that if you're left back and right back, if they're going forward, you're not going to be left with a 2v2 at the back. You're going to have one CDM that drops in between and almost makes that temporary back three. What's also really good about this formation is it's a formation to be used mainly when you're losing or when you're drawing. So if you're losing one or two goals because we've got pressure in every touch on, your team press when there's a chance for you to do so. So AI kind of helps you out on that perspective. So you're basically defending normally, but AI only presses when there's a clean chance for you to do it. That way you don't leave gaps in behind. If you do enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe. I do have more tutorials coming soon. If you do like this formation as well, you can see some of my other formations. But without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, now let's go through the tactics. Again, it's very important that you listen to why the reasonings I give you for each tactic because it will depend on how this formation will work. If you don't copy it correctly, the formation may not work. The first thing is defensive style. We've gone on pressure on heavy touch because we want this to be an attacking formation. We want our team to be pressing. Pressure on heavy touch is basically like team press, but AI does it for like only a couple of seconds. The benefit of this is like a safety net. Unlike press after possession loss, your team just press all the time. If a good player, I would say goal two and above, knows you're doing this, you'll start through balling you down the wing and we know how bad counters are. The good thing with pressure and every touch is your team only press when there's a high chance you win the ball, when your opponent makes a mistake or they take a heavy touch. So the benefit is it's kind of like a surprise mechanic, as, the, as people will say. So it only surprises your opponent and presses them at key intervals when there's a high chance when AI deems it's viable for you to win the ball. So you yeah, have that safety note of not being too exposed but still pressing. Now with the width, we go on with the width with 5. Don't forget, the 4 triple 2 is almost like a 4 4 2. The cams, they basically play almost as left mids and right mids in a 4 triple 2 formation. They're not really very centralized. So you don't really need to increase the width too much. They still come back and they still defend. Uh, when they're defending, they come back and they help and they defend on the wing area. So you don't have to worry about that too much. I think the 5 width is completely fine because you're wide enough to press with pressure every touch. And also you're not too static and too narrow and compact to get exploited down the wings. On a depth, you're going to put on depth of four. The reason why I put a depth of four is you don't want your four strikers to be too far ahead. If they're too far ahead, you're going to be you're going to leave a massive gap between your CDM and your front four. Because don't forget, when you're going forward, these left attacking mid, right attacking mid, or the, the two cams, they go forward and you end up having a kind of a straight line of four. And your two CDMs end up becoming isolated. You don't want this gap to be too big when you win the ball back. Otherwise, you're going to really, I suppose you can say, disrupt your progressive play when you're building up. So I would say four, you're not going too far forward, but there's also not too many gaps in behind. And also when you're defending, this way you can also bring back one of your strikers and defend if you're ever in trouble. Now going over to defensive style, what's important here is long ball. If you don't use long ball, this formation won't work. The reason why long ball is important because these cams, they don't have the get in behind option. You need these to for them to act as inverted wingers, you need them to be on getting behind. So it is very, very important that these are on getting behind. So that's why you want long ball. Long ball basically is trying to say to you, okay, I want the cams to make runs going forward. Long ball just means get it behind. And that means players are going to be making attacking runs going forward. With a width, we've gone with a very unorthodox approach of going with three. The reason why is when the left back and right back, when they overlap, what's going to happen is these guys are going to become inverted wingers. So they're going to get pushed inside internally, if that makes sense. So left back and right back are going to go around the outside. So you want the kind of the... It will still be quite wide-ish because it's a 4 triple 2 but they'll be narrow enough where they're basically occupying key positions. So you want to basically create a 4v4 situation and you want these cams to be in between your opponent's centre back and his left back. So that's why those are put on 3 because it's a good appropriate balance. So 3 and then players in the box we've gone with a standard of 5. 
but you can change this if you want to um, but I'll say five is good especially if you like to do crosses and um, corners and free kicks I would say put this on one because counter attack is deadly now we're going to go over to the instructions I'm going to explain to you how it progresses into like a six striker formation and how you can keep it a four striker formation if you don't want a six okay let's go over the instructions okay first both strikers on stay central come back in the fence this is extremely important. You want these two strikers to be occupying your opponent's center backs. That way you your opponent has nowhere to go. You're going to have always attacking options in front of the goal. And that means you can always distribute the ball to either one of your strikers. And you're always going to create a 2v2 situation. That's very important that they're both on stay central and come back on a fence. Come back on a fence just means that when you defend, they're going to come back a little bit. Don't worry, they won't come back too much. They'll be still far forward because obviously the patch that came out last year affected how, they come, how far they come back. But they still go forward. Now when it comes to left attacking mid and right attacking mid, we've gone with the same thing, we just have come back on the fence, we kept it simple. If you want, you can put get into the box for a cross if you really want to, um, and that's why I say to you, you know, you can adjust this as you want to the players in the box. But if you want to do it manually over here, you can override that and you can add get into the box if you want to. I prefer to also pin my opponent outside the box, so I prefer leaving this on balance and letting AI decide when to get back in the box. You want them to come back on the fence, that way if your opponent is attacking you, these both come back and you're basically defending a 4-4-2 flat. So you have that stability, you're covering all areas of the pitch and left attacking mid and the right attacking mid are coming back. Now what you can do is you can put these people on, or these individuals on free room if you want to. Um, it's not that important, you can, um, I'll get on to why you should try doing that in a second. Um, but make sure you do not use drift wide. Don't use drift wide because if you do, your, center, your right center back, or sorry, your, your right back and your right attack in mid when they go forward they're just going to be stuck together and you don't want that because that's ineffective so it's very important that you don't leave this on drift wide make sure you leave this on balanced or on free room i just want to say if you do want to get better at fifa i do have a paid advanced in-depth fifa school series this is for all levels of those that want to improve in fifa this is different from youtube videos it's a progressive learning system where all the videos go completely in depth and you won't find these videos on my youtube channel these go beyond the scope of typical YouTube videos. Um, they're very long elaborate videos explaining what you need to do and what you need to become a better game, explaining everything. So come join hundreds of others in a mature audience community for those looking to get better at FIFA. Link is in the description for more information. Patreon.com forward slash no guys. Of course, I have all of last year's videos as well, which all apply to this year. And I'll have new videos coming soon for FIFA 21. And it's a complete money back guarantee. So after one month, you decide that you didn't get better at FIFA, I've refund your money back and that way you won't lose anything. So come join the FIFA School Series. But anyway, back to the instructions. So, um, as I mentioned, leave these guys on balanced. Um, then when it comes to the CDM, this is what's also very important. We've just gone with stay back while attacking cover center. We haven't gone with man mark, we haven't gone with cut passing lanes. I found that CDMs this year, they traditionally sit a bit more forward. And I think what's very, very important is with the two CDMs, you don't want them to be too far forward. And I think with cut passing lanes, I think especially in a 4 triple 2 where you don't have that, that cam safety net, because normally in a 4 triple 2 one you have that cam over here that's able to position himself acutely. You don't have that anymore, so I'd probably recommend leaving this unbalanced. Um, I've not put conservative on because we want this to be an aggressive formation, so that's why we left the interceptions unbalanced. Now when it comes to left back and right back though, we have stay back while attacking, conservative interceptions and overlap for both left backs and right backs. Now this is very important. Conservative is important so that way you don't get done on the counter attack. And also, more importantly, when your opponent wins the ball back, they don't be, they don't aggressively push your opponent. Overlap is important. Now, when you're attacking, you can choose to basic attack like this. What would happen is if you choose it like this, your team will play in a 4-4-2, basically. You'll have four strikers up front. But what if you want to create the six striker formation, as I mentioned in the beginning? All you have to do then is go to your most defensive player, put drop between defenders. So what this basically means is when you have the ball, this CDM will drop in between. So you have like a temporary back three alongside, so in this case, Zoko and my two center backs. Then both the left back and right back, when they go forward, they're gonna go forward on overlap. But my most important thing over here is overlap. Because they're on overlap, what this is saying is, okay, because there's already attacking mid over there, they're gonna go on the outside. And that's what turns these players into inverted wingers. And that's how you get that numerical advantage by having six players all going forward at the same time that's how you get that six forward front line what's also very important is when these guys go forward these left back and right back they pin your opponent's back four so your opponent will have a back four like this what these basically do is they basically split your opponent's left back and right back 
compared to a centre backs. So it basically creates a 4v2 situation in the middle and your opponent can only only has two CDMs if you're playing a 4-2-3-1 to defend against it. The question you may ask is okay then how do these left back and right backs go forward if they're on stay back while attacking? Well that comes to the D-pad tactics. The most important thing is to use attacking full backs. When you activate that it overrides the instruction to stay back while attacking and the left back and right back they go forward manually so that's why you create that six striker formation on a fly so when you're losing this is the formation you want to change to you might decide for example to play as it is with a four striker formation then let's say for example okay let's say you want to be even more attacking then you quickly flick that switch and you can send both your left back and right back forward to create a six striker formation I just want to say one final thing as well. The drop between defenders is not compulsory. Um, what you can do is you can basically attack in a six striker formation, your left back and right back, and you can have your front four if that makes sense. But that means you'll only have two centre backs at the back. So if you're very comfortable with defending, you don't have to use drop between defenders. You can leave this on balance. But if you know you struggle with counter attacks, then what I would say is use drop between defenders and then increase the defensive width to about around, I'll say about six. What you're doing that way is you'll create a situation where the left centre back will be a bit more wider with the right centre back and then a CDM will drop just in front. That way you're good stability on all sides. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Don't forget if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, I have more formation videos on my channel. And this formation didn't really work out for you. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.